Hi, today I'm going to talk about something that's a bit morbid, but a shared experience among human beings. Scars. A PUBG match lost, a beloved movie character dying, an accident or maybe lack of awareness. Over time they may fade, but in our minds they remain fresh. Reminders of a traumatic past. Compared to our fleeting existences, the Earth has a really long past. Over 4.5 billion years of history and a surface riddled with scars of old. Let's visit one of these mega scars in the state of Arizona, USA. Fifty thousand years ago, during the Pleistocene era, a small rock from outer space did that to the Earth, leaving a mark on its surface that is visible to this day. The crater is over 1200 meters wide, 170 meters deep, and has a rim that rises up 45 meters from the surrounding plains. The rock that did this is estimated to have been only 50 meters in diameter. Against the Eiffel Tower, the rock would look somewhat like this. These events are not limited just to the past. They have happened relatively recently as well. One such event being the 1918 Tunguska event in Russia. Take a look at what the newspapers had to say about it. If it happened close to a city, the dead toll would be in millions. An expedition sent to the site later on found the landscape to be transformed completely as a result of the impact. Maybe you'd prefer something in color, something that's a bit more recent. On February 15, 2013, an undetected asteroid entered the Earth's atmosphere and exploded over Chelyabinsk, Russia, causing an airburst and shockwave that struck six cities around the region. The blast injured more than 1,600 people and caused over $30 million in damages. These smaller, non-planet killing incidences happen roughly every 300 years. I found this tweet that perfectly expresses our situation. Our confidence is unfounded and we are not safe. Understandably, humanity has been on the lookout for such rocks, employing our powerful telescopes to scan the skies for them. And boy oh boy have we succeeded. Over the years, millions of rocks similar in size to the one that exploded over Russia have been identified. To deal with the threat of potential extinction, or at the very least loss of millions of lives, NASA has created the Planetary Defense Coordination Office. Its job is to be on the lookout for potentially hazardous asteroids or comets and to devise ways to mitigate such threats. And they have come up with a few methods. Method 1. We could ask Bruce Willis to go and plant a nuke on it and make it go boom. Yes, it was very difficult to prepare for this video. I had to watch Armageddon three times. Or we could try burning it up with powerful lasers. Death Star style. Another practical way that this could be accomplished using current technology involves ramming something into the rock and redirecting it away from collision course. If you think the last one sounds too sci-fi, I have some news for you. NASA is about to send out its first planetary defense mission. It's called DART, which stands for Double Asteroid Redirection Test. The craft will head out to an asteroid called Didymos and its satellite, Dimorphos, which some people have been calling Diddy Moon, and then promptly proceed to ram itself into the smaller asteroid. It is expected to change the orbital period of the smaller asteroid by 10 minutes and is supposed to be a demonstration for this particular way of redirecting asteroids from their collision courses. This particular asteroid is not on collision course with the Earth. But why Didymos? Didymos was discovered in 1996 by the University of Arizona Steward Observatory's Space Watch Survey using its 0.9 meter telescope at Kitts National Peak Observatory in Arizona. Since we have been observing the asteroid for decades now, we know a lot about it. We were able to figure out the approximate size, orbital period, as well as confirm the presence of a smaller satellite asteroid around the bigger one. The binary nature of the asteroid was discovered by the Goldstone Observatory using delay Doppler echoes, a technique involving bouncing microwaves off a target and analyzing how the object's motion 
has altered the frequency of the return signal. The variation gives direct and highly accurate measurements of the radial component of the target's velocity. The confirmation of the observations came in with an optical light curve analysis along with Arecibo radar-based observations in November of 2003. Mass calculations have been done with the assumption that they are similar in composition to other near-Earth objects. It should be noted that the size of the asteroid moon is too small to get an independent estimate of its mass. Didymos is about 780 meters in diameter, while Dimorphos is 160 meters in size. When DART reaches the Didymos system, the distance between it and the Earth would be around 11 million kilometers, which is close enough for Earth-based telescopes to measure the effects of the collision. It is expected to shorten the orbit of Dimorphos by several minutes, changing the orbital time period from 11 hours 55 minutes to 11 hours 45 minutes, while the mission success criteria is a change of just 73 seconds. Although most models show that it would end up being more than that. The Didymos system is an eclipsing binary, meaning that from our vantage on Earth, Dimorphos regularly passes in front of and behind Didymos as it orbits. Consequently, Earth-based telescopes can measure the regular variation of brightness of the combined Didymos-Dimorphos system. Plus, since it's not headed for the Earth, the test won't backfire on us. Post-impact, we will measure the amount of momentum imparted using Earth-based telescopes. Using the model based on the measurements, the requirements to deal with future threats could be determined. In addition to Earth-based telescopes, onboard camera information will be used to observe the effects of terrain, density of the asteroid, location of the impact, slope of the surface, and presence of boulders on the end result of the impact. The impact's energy will excavate a crater and blast thousands of tons of asteroid surface material called ejecta into space. A CubeSat called Lycia Cube will fly by and take pictures, giving us an even better estimate of the effects of the impact. More about the CubeSat later. The recoil kick from these ejecta on the asteroid could rival or even exceed the direct push from the DART spacecraft, improving the results we are getting in comparison to the effort we are putting in. If you remember the OSIRIS-REx sample collection mission, it ended up going way too far into the surface of Bennu than what NASA had planned for it, owing to the asteroid's unexpected nature. The data collected would help us understand the nature of hypervelocity impacts, especially the ones where one of the objects is really small. You may think that we could have done this using supercomputers to simulate the event, but since the interaction is basically planetary in scale, it's hard to simulate it even when using supercomputers. The asteroid's ability not to budge under impacts is also dependent on its strength and porosity. But the data related to these properties of asteroids is largely unknown. This opportunity would let us get an idea about it. The craft is carrying some cutting-edge technology with it and will also be performing a few tech demonstrations along the way. Let's take a look under the hood. DART is going to demonstrate the next C-ion propulsion system. It produces thrust by electrostatic acceleration of electrically charged atoms, that is ions, formed from the xenon propellant and it is solar-powered. While ion propulsion systems have previously been used successfully by NASA's Dawn and Deep Space One spacecrafts, this design is expected to provide higher specific impulse, fuel efficiency, and operational flexibility. The Radial Line Slot Array RLSA, is DART's way of communicating with the Earth and is capable of both sending and receiving data. Draco is a high-resolution imager. It is based on the long-range reconnaissance imager aboard the New Horizons spacecraft, which delivered the first close-up images of the Pluto system. It will snap images of the asteroid system on approach to measure the size and shape of the target, providing essential data for the analysis and interpretation of the kinetic impact test results. The images acquired by Draco before the kinetic impact will be streamed back to Earth in real time. 
In its final moments, Draco will help identify and analyze the impact site by providing high-resolution scientific images of the surface of Dimorphos. Leisha Cube would end up getting launched away from the main craft about 10 days before the collision and will photograph the effects of the impact three minutes after the collision. It is a 6U CubeSat provided by the Italian Space Agency and is carrying two optical cameras named Luke and Leia. Its onboard propulsion systems would be used to alter its trajectory and place itself in the right position to get the kind of data that would complement the images from Draco. To enable the spacecraft to actually hit the asteroid, it has been equipped with the Smart Nav Navigation System, which will be turned on four hours before the collision and will help adjust the trajectory of the craft to ensure success. Since at the speeds at which the craft is traveling, it's not possible for any human being to make the appropriate adjustments in time. The decisions would be made based on the data coming in from Draco. Interestingly, for the first three of the four hours, the tracking target for the system would be the bigger asteroid instead of the smaller one due to its better visibility. The power source for the craft is Rosa. No, not that Rosa, this one. Rollout solar arrays or Rosas refer to these flexible and rollable solar wings that are lighter and more compact than traditional solar arrays. In space, each of these compact wings roll out to about 28 feet or 8.5 meters. Rosas are not being used for the first time on this craft. In 2017, they were deployed aboard the ISS. With five years and $330 million invested into it, the spacecraft has begun its journey to slam into an asteroid at the speed of 24,000 km per hour from the Vandenberg base in California on the 24th of November 2021. It will be reaching Didymos system by September of 2022. The site of the mission will be revisited by European Space Agency's HERA mission, which will be launched in 2024, along with two more CubeSats, Milani and Juventus, which will attempt a follow-up survey of the experiment and the crater left behind by TART. With its plethora of instruments, it will perform high-resolution visual, laser and radio science mapping of the asteroid moon to build detailed maps of its surface and internal structure. Hey, if you liked our new graphic heavy approach, leave us a comment to let us know. Make sure to like and share the video as well as subscribe to the channel for more content like this. Thank you for watching and we will see you next time.